Hey everyone, my name is Anthony. Uh, this video is going to be more like a thought dump, I guess, instead of like something structured where I list out points and everything. Structuring what I say and like planning videos is just way too much for me to handle. Even though those videos get more views, like the ones that I try to make them entertaining and like to the point and stuff. Uh, it's just not me, and I just want to share my thoughts and move on as quickly as I can, because, uh, I don't know, that's just how it's going to work, at least for the time being. Uh, so anyway, I don't like uh, programmatic proof of work or prog pow. Uh, I think it's anti-capitalism and used to, uh, it's anti-capitalism and pro-socialism, and I don't really like socialism. Uh, for a number of reasons, which I'll get into later and, and throughout the videos and stuff. And uh, I think the way this is going to work, it's it's going to be like a series of videos where I just keep talking about stuff until I get bored of it. Anyway, I, I guess I should explain what ProgPow is. Uh, it's a new proof-of-work mining algorithm for Ethereum designed to keep ASICs off of the network. Uh, I guess like the rationale and, and thinking behind it is that ASICs centralize the network because ASIC manufacturers are in charge of supply and uh, the ASIC machines are often difficult and expensive for average consumers to, to buy and obtain. There's also like the thinking that like uh, ASIC manufacturers mine with the equipment before they sell them to consumers and all that. So ProgPow aims to eliminate ASICs and uh, have Ethereum rely on only GPU mining power uh, and anyone can buy GPUs, I guess. Uh, so I'm going to go through, uh, like right now in this video, I'm going to go through this one video where Christy Lee Minehan, uh, I don't know if that's her real name, uh, she also goes by Oh God, a Girl and uh, M Miss If, I think. But this video is her explaining uh, Prague Pow and answering some questions uh, from the audience. Uh, I'm not going to go into the technical stuff behind Prague Pow because uh, as far as I can tell, the technical stuff behind it works and it accomplishes what it's set out to do, like uh, keep ASICs off the network and whatever. So I don't think there's really any debating on if it works. Uh, what I'm going to argue is that, uh, or try to point out is if it is dangerous and why I think it's dangerous to, uh, to the Ethereum community and uh, economy and society and all that. So, uh, so yeah, I'm just going to get right into it now. So the first thing I want to point out is in this uh, Q&A section of the video, the first guy that asked her a question, uh, he was saying like, oh, miners only care about uh, profits and uh, and power consumption and all that. And uh, th this is what Christy has to say about it. From a miner's standpoint, um, miners really care about balance. Now, core power, it does consume more, more power simply because it uses the core, which was not used before. But the important thing with that is that you take an ASIC that also has the core, also has the memory, take a GPU, same, it will match. Um, your other point was that miners only care about power, but I, I really contest that. Miners really, really just care about fairness. That's, that's the crux of it. We care about being able to all be on the same playing field and the same level so Christy seems to think that miners only care about balance and fairness. Uh, that's not actually accurate. Uh, socialists are the ones that care about uh, balance and fairness. And that's largely because they're afraid of having the capability to compete with everyone else in a free and open market. And of course, like socialism has been proven time and time again not to work which I'm not going to get into why it doesn't and all that in this video. But miners are a business. They, they're they out to make money. Uh, miners are extremely competitive and, uh, and look to get any advantage they can. Uh, this is why ASICs became popular in the first place, because miners were looking for an advantage through efficiency, which also brought in higher uh, hash rates. Uh, and this is also why miners wait to release blocks uh, after solving them so they can get a head start on the next block before everyone else. Uh, and then uh, that's also 
why that ASIC boost stuff uh, came about and, and all that. And was it Bitmain or something exploiting that? Uh, and that's also why miners moved to different locations for cheaper electricity and uh, all that stuff. Uh, so there, there's not going to be anything to stop competition via efficient business practices and, and operations. Uh, what's going to happen if we do this, you know, like every time someone has a competitive advantage, are you just going to release a new mining algorithm or something to to shut them down? That's kind of like one of the points that I, I want to make is that Prague Pow is is essentially destroying competition in, in the mining space by not letting ASIC miners compete and build and, and expand the network and, and give people what they want. And destroying competition is kind of essentially just bad for society. Like, uh, it's bad for progressing society. Like, uh, I like to think of like a skateboarder always like forced to learn new tricks to get more attention and, and to win like gold medals and everything. Like, like Tony Hawk doing the 900 back in the early 90s and, and all these crazy like skateboarders and tricks and stuff. They do it because that's what it takes to become successful in their career. And then all these tricks, uh, all these new tricks progress uh, skateboarding as a whole. So now we have skateboarders doing, instead of 900s, they do 99,000 hundreds and stuff like that. Maybe not that extreme, but but there are like new tricks and, and skateboarding progresses instead of stagnating. And, and that's the same thing with, with uh, cryptocurrency and technology and society and everything. Uh, if you destroy competition, then everything just stagnates, and and that's just that's just terrible. So now uh, this is again the same guy uh, asking her another question, and he's talking about uh, optimizing, building an ASIC, and optimizing it for power consumption because miners care about power. And uh, so he's saying like how how he would do that and and how that would work and whatever because GPUs aren't optimized for power. So what he would do is is optimize an ASIC for power and then more miners will buy that because less power consumption is higher efficiency in mining and uh, more more profits for uh, for the miners. Uh, and that is going to consume less energy per two hundred six bit multiplication now. It's possible, and absolutely likely, that uh, GPU designers did not build their circuits to minimize for for low power, um, for low energy expenditure per unit of work. I want to say that I go and look at um, the GPU's design again. The most the ones we target here are defaults. If you actually go and look at AMD or Nvidia's GPUs that do target low power for every energy of work, it's their new Tesla lines specifically for G6 that consume about 55 watts per car for about, I think it's 9.6 teraflops. So Christy goes on to say that uh, she doesn't believe that GPUs aren't optimized for power. Then she then she directs us to the, uh, to the Tesla uh, GPU saying, oh, it, it's designed for 55 watts at 9.6 teraflops. Uh, but that's not a consumer card. So I assume that the new card that she's talking about is the Tesla T4. Uh, I'm just looking at Wikipedia here, and uh, uh, maybe I should just put this on, on screen instead. It would be a lot easier than doing what I'm doing. Yeah, so if we look, most of the Tesla cards are 250 to 300 watts of power. And uh, then there's the Tesla T4, which is, uh, I don't know if it's released yet. I don't, I don't think it is. Uh, but then the similar previous card would be the Tesla P4, which consumes 50 to 75 watts of power. So that's why I'm thinking she's talking about the Tesla T4 when she says uh, it does 55 watts at uh, 9.6 teraflops, which I don't, I don't know the teraflops rating on all these cards. And, and I would think that it would depend on what uh, math operation you're doing and everything. So yeah, if we bring up these Tesla cards, they're not consumer cards. And even though they're not consumer cards, they're still not optimized for power. Like one of them is through the series. So I don't, I don't know where she's getting that. And, and if we look at the prices of the previous Tesla P4 card. There's the Tesla P4, which is eight gigabytes of RAM. And then there's the Tesla P40, which is 40 gigabytes of RAM. 
the Tesla P4 is the 50 to 75 watt one, and that's 8 gigs of RAM. And then the P40 is 256 gigs at 24 gigs of RAM. So let's just say that I don't know how much RAM or if more RAM is going to mine faster or whatever. Uh, but let's say that the P4 is, is the best card. Uh, that's a $2,000 card. I believe it launched at like $2,000 to $2,200, somewhere around there. The average consumer isn't going to have that money. And, and, and even miners, uh, it still leaves it open for, for not necessarily, yeah, you could say like an ASIC manufacturer can still optimize a card for power and, and sell it for cheaper than, than the Tesla P4. And this isn't really going to solve centralization because people with more money are just going to buy more GPUs and, and add them to the network under their own control. And there's an incentive to do that because having more GPUs gives you more hash power and more hash power means that you have a higher chance of receiving a block reward. So, and then also having more hash power gives you more control over the network. So there, there's two incentives there. And because of this, uh, because you're constantly going to get a block reward, uh, there, there's an opportunity for investors to come in and, and invest in your mining company and, and help you afford more GPUs and everything. Because now those investors that are helping you build this mining farm are going to have a say in the network as well and get a part of that block reward. So this doesn't really solve centralization in my mind because more people could just, like rich people could just buy more GPUs the same way that rich people can just buy more ASICs. Also, like right now, we have independent ASIC manufacturers, not like big corporations or anything. So if you, uh, we'll, we'll talk about this in another video, but uh, NVIDIA and AMD, uh, the GPU manufacturers are involved in reviewing uh, this code and, and progressive work, proof of work, progress. I'm, I'm sorry for saying progressive proof of work just gets in my, stuck in my head, programmatic proof of work. Yeah, like AMD and NVIDIA are involved in this, uh, which uh, I'll, I'll show that clip now. So this next question, questioner actually asks about that and asks like, so there's this speculation that AMD and NVIDIA are like behind ProgPow. Hi, um, so there is a speculation that this algorithm was developed by AMD and NVIDIA. <laughs> It's uh, it's funny that Christy just laughs it off, like doesn't take it seriously at all. So, and you can always see that people who work was behind it, by going on instead of us. Why does it matter who created it? Did you? So, two parts to that. First, the amount of work and research that goes into designing an algorithm, both AMD and NVIDIA have way better things to do. Um, for a start, cryptocurrency mining, and I'm really, really, really um, knowledgeable on this, considering I contributed to most of it, only made about $384 million uh, last year for them. So Christy is like, why does it matter if uh, AMD and Nvi NVIDIA like help create this? Uh, because AMD and NVIDIA only made $384 million last year off of uh, cryptocurrency mining, so they don't care. It's, it's not a lot of money to them. Well, that's not an argument because companies are about investment in new trends and capitalizing on, on new trends to invest in. So uh, it, it makes sense for a company to get in at the bottom or as close to the bottom as they can. And I mean, like moving mining over, especially Ethereum mining, where uh, Ethereum mining, as far as I know, I don't quote me on this, it's, it's still like viable and profitable and stuff. It just centralizes everything over to AMD and NVIDIA instead of like these lesser known third party ASIC manufacturers that don't have as much control over uh, over like anything. Now, now you're moving all the centralization from the third party ASIC manufacturers over to AMD and NVIDIA. You're not getting rid of centralization. You're moving centralization to someone else. But Christie's arguments saying that, oh, they don't care. They only made $384 million off of it. 
Like that argument is like saying, oh, AMD and NVIDIA don't care about GPUs for gaming. Like back in 1986, they only made $300 million off of it. They rather invest in like AI space. Oh, that's what Christie says. Like AMD and NVIDIA, they care about AI space and, and stuff like that. That's not true. When when you're a company, you care about all assets that you're, all, all assets or faucets or all, all uses for your GPU because you can capitalize on everything. That's the same reason, like, uh, who was it? Uh, oh, now I forget their name, but but it, it's a division of Asus. I don't think a lot of people know this, but uh, oh, I got to look up their name now. Didn't have to look it up. It just came to me, ASRock. That's why ASRock uh, made that GPU mining board with all those PCIe slots on it because they they capitalized on, on the cryptocurrency thing because they saw there was a demand for it. And also like having mining on GPUs and having AMD and NVIDIA essentially be the only suppliers for this, uh, then you still have to worry about, because the worry in the past was like, oh, ASIC manufacturers are going to mine on this equipment before they sell it to computer to consumers and, and miners and, and mining operations and, and whatever. So like uh, that doesn't solve anything because you still have to worry about AMD and NVIDIA mining on the, on their hardware before selling it. So the last thing I want to touch base on or show you, at least in this video, and, and there'll be more coming up in, in the future, is 39 minutes into into this ProgPow video. Why do they mostly just care about uh, the um, offer that they did? Correct. Did you hear that? Miners only care about the profit that they make, and Christy says, correct. What the hell? Just like a second ago, beginning of this video, I started out showing you that Christy thought that miners only thought about balance and fairness. Which one is it again? Take care, guys. Thank you, and goodbye.